Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Yeah, I'm breaking them down to bite-sized pieces today. Pretty good stuff. First up, Bitcoin confiscated from the PLUS token, which is a big Ponzi scam, was likely sold by China and is not being hoarded in the treasury. This has pretty big ramifications and it kind of explains a lot of what has been going on with the price action also. Stella has been going crazy and this could be part of the reason. It awakens with a 100% price surge after two protocol upgrades. Also more China news, the BSN or the National Blockchain Service Network Provider adds one more project to its list and that is Polkadot. And finally, Cardano's Gogan era inching closer. We're gonna take a look at what that all means and what is also going on with the next two developments. So we'll go over all that, but let's quickly take a look at what's going in the market. Today is uh, Saturday, November 28th. It's 9 a.m. Uh, pretty cloudy, rainy day here in Houston. But uh, here's what we got and what is going on. So Bitcoin, a little bit of a surge. I like to see this, 17.4. It's up 4%, but down 6% for the week. And we've seen some uh, pretty big swings lately. Uh, almost $3,000 in a 24-hour time frame. And that's nothing to sneeze at, but it uh, looks like we may be on the road up, but uh, I am still a little bearish in this uh, position. I think there's uh, still a bit more of uh, losses to have, but you know, who knows? Uh, Ethereum, 529, I like that. XRP is up massively again, 88% uh, over seven days, 16% for the 24 hour. Tether's in fourth place, still at 19 billion, but here's an interesting thing. Cardano is now in the fifth position. Look at this, Cardano was down around eight, nine, sometimes 11. And uh, Polkadot was up around here. Bitcoin Cash were dropping position. Chainlink was usually number five, but Cardano has overtaken that position. Not by much. Uh, we're looking at a 5 billion, 5.2 billion market cap to 5.1 billion market cap. But Chainlink is, I mean, excuse me, Cardano is on a huge tear. And when we go over this, uh, this story, which is the last one, which really is probably one of the bigger ones, uh, you're going to understand why this is all happening. Also, Stellar at 143% for the week, 13% for the 24 hour. Also, let's take a look at this instead of in uh, USD, but also in Bitcoin. So we can compare everything against the dollar, but the dollar is pretty weak. Uh, we take a look at that. Ethereum about 0.4, XRP 11, 100% for seven days as far as in relation to Bitcoin. Cardano still up massive. Everything's up. I mean, let's just be honest, but 160% for Stellar. Get out of here. It's crazy. 3.4 for Monero, 8% for NEM. What, what, you know, what we should be asking is what's down right now? I mean, we took such a huge dip. I mean, how could, a, how could anything be losing? Well, who will be token, but what are you gonna do? Zcash, 3.4 up, that's good. 3.8, nothing really fantastic. All right, let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin that was confiscated from the plus token scam was sold by China. So everybody had been reporting about this, about the PLUS token. It was a huge scam, just a Ponzi scheme. They would take money from the new people coming in and pay the old people, and then it would just keep going around and around. It was a billion dollar scam, multi-billion dollar scam. And uh, they finally got caught, but uh, damage is done. And of course, uh, China was in the middle of this. And it was able to confiscate a whole ton of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And everybody thought that what they were going to do was just hold it and put in their treasury. And then they would dominate the world scene. But as it appears here, that's not the case. They don't really care that much. They want cash and they want to keep things liquid. So I, I know we had talked about yesterday about Brad Garlinghouse being on uh, Anthony Pompliano's podcast. And they were going back and forth about the Chinese uh, mining pools versus the my, the individual miners and there was a big debate but it, it doesn't really matter what it really matters is is public perception and brad garlinghouse is doing a fantastic job of rattling the cages pounding the desk and going you know what uh, we got to really control the situation because china is taking over bitcoin that could be a national security issue and if you if you step back and look at you know like 3d chess type thing you're like it's, it's a great move it's brilliant and there's actually an article over a BTC manager, which talks about the U.S. intelligence asks the SEC to support Bitcoin and crypto companies. And the reason because uh, they're looking at national security issues, which is one of the questions I actually uh, brought up yesterday. Well, could this be a national security issue? And it looks like um, people are taking the bait. So whether that be the actual plan or not, it's uh, it's still a great move. It's, it's a great move for crypto. And we'll see if it all pans out. But in all honesty, if you take if you peel back the layers, China's not like they really want it. They're like, we want some cash. So what happened here? So Chinese crypto journalist Colin Wu and a few other experts believe that Bitcoin and Ethereum confiscated by the Chinese government from the plus token scam. 
has been converted to fiat and put to the central bank of China. Colin Wu shared screenshots of official documents about the confiscation of extremely large amounts of Bitcoin uh, from the Plus Token scam, biggest Ponzi in history, crypto history. Anyhow, it was 190,000 Bitcoin and 830,000 ETH. That's a ton of crypto, which cost over $3 billion. And wow, it was $3 billion just for Bitcoin and $423 billion for Ethereum. Wow. And says that according to the document, the Chinese government sold that crypto and put the funds to the central treasury managed by the People's Bank of China. So it says here the official announcement seems to indicate the government has sold it and returned to the central treasury managed by the central bank. So the big question would be, well, China likes to put out official announcements, which are totally fake. So I know that there's a lot of activity in, in the Twitterverse and they're talking about tracking the, these different transactions uh, through different wallets. So we will see if this holds true. But if it does, was it what it says to me is that if China had all this crypto, then they had to liquidate it and they did it through uh, through Huobi and OKX. And if they did that, that would play a big thing a little piece in the market i would say if you have all those different bitcoin and ethereum getting liquidated and just sold on the uh on the open market because they're not like micro strategy they don't have to keep the price down they're just like you know what just sell it get rid of it and then off they go i mean they may have but i don't, I don't think that would be the case so if they did do that which it sounds like they did then uh that could have been uh part of the reason for a little bit of price fluctuation and this this has been going on for a while this isn't just happened like last week so just so everybody knows but I think it's an interesting development. And to me, it really doesn't matter if they did sell it or they did keep it. Uh, whatever it means, it means that that Bitcoin Ethereum is either locked away uh, in some place and probably not going to be sold, or it got sold to you know the highest bidder and is in the hands of potentially somebody else, whales or whatnot. And hopefully it gets locked up in that situation. But for what we see right now for the price action, I mean, we've had a little bit of an increase uh, these last couple of days, but I don't think it's going to last. I think we're going to see some, some more dips. And for me, again, dollar cost averager, these are great days. These are the days I live for. I'll be increasing my positions. I buy you know, crypto every single day. So uh, great. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, I had no idea what was going on with Stellar because I mean, the, the price fluctuation was so great. I thought it was just in tandem with the XRP, but uh, there's also always reasons behind uh, price action. So this is what happened. Stellar's uh, had an upgrade and it boosted the prices uh, dramatically. They underwent a public upgrade on November 23rd that was voted in and implemented by its network's validators. Uh, it came with two new features. So protocol 15 includes these features called claimable balances and sponsored reserves that make it easier to build apps on Stellar. That's great. Make it easier for people to build on Stellar, all the different dApps they want to do. Then you'll have a more robust community and people will want to use Stellar and buy Stellar and then the price goes up. Fantastic. So what are these two things? Well, the claimable balances feature introduces a new ledger entry for splitting payments into two different parts. And I was like, well, who cares? What is that all about? It enables independence between sending and receiving accounts, which is necessary to allow efficient and seamless bridging services for fiat and other support digital assets using XLM or Stellar. And then sponsored reserves allow accounts to sponsor each other without surrendering Stellar from their control. The feature also comes with uh, new extensions that will enable recording key information about the sponsorship details or deals. So it just sounds like to me that this is going to make it more uh, better operability, a little bit more easier to use, especially for those developers. So yeah, I can see it. And I don't know if it's if that's the whole reason for the price action, but I'm sure it could definitely help. Last piece is just on this. Uh, network is based on a Proof of stake consensus, which is one of the reasons why I own Stellar. I own Stellar and I own XRP because I don't know which one is going to be uh, the one that is chosen for cross-border payments. So I hedge my bets. And uh, that's why I have both. Now, here's what's next. They did say that uh, Whale Alert is now reporting an increased movement of huge amounts of XLM between exchanges and wallets. And depending on who you believe, uh, it's never a good thing when the whale wallets go to the exchanges because that means a massive sell-off. Other people have told me, oh, but you got to watch out because those whales will do that and they'll trick everybody and they'll think it's going to be a sell-off and it's not and they'll gobble everything up. I'm like, whatever. This is why I don't trade. This is why I don't trade because there's so much manipulation going on. I just don't have time for that. If you're a trader, God bless you. I don't know how you can do it. So I just buy it, set it and forget it and just... That's it. That's my whole strategy. 
And of course, buy up uh, dips, uh, which works out pretty well usually. All right, so that's it for Stellar. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm excited about the, the project. I think it's gonna do great things, but only time will tell. All right, let's move on. Next up, another project I own. And if you've noticed on this channel, I uh, do not like to hide things. And uh, when I talk about projects, it's because I am biased. <laughs> I mean, it always surprised me when like like other YouTubers or other people on Twitter are like, I just do it because I love the project. And you know, and I'm like, yeah, you're invested into it. So all these different things I'm talking about, I'm invested into them. There's, there's a reason why I talk about these things. Of course, I don't, you know, just me talking about it doesn't really do a bent in, in the price it's just me talking about it but it does attract my attention and it is a reason why i talk about these things a lot more so uh what's going on here i thought it was interesting is because uh china's state uh, sanctioned blockchain product or bsn it added polka dot i was like geez that's amazing so what's going on here so if you don't know bsn is the uh, state-run blockchain service network it is a closed network and is it it's it's the initiative for China to kind of take control of, of blockchain in their country and really get people involved because they want to be the world leader. And that's a smart thing because apparently America can't do that because they just drag their feet. Not that I'm bitter, just that I'm bitter. And, uh, you know, good for China for, you know, taking a lead in these permission. I mean, it is what it is. It is still permission. But, hey, I mean, they're, they're taking the lead, so good for them. Anyhow, the state-sanctioned network, which was launched in July, wow, allows developers to access public chains, public chains, to build or operate their decentralized applications or dApps, but they're all closed. So they state, we anticipate Polkadot to be used by developers across the world to build and run innovative protocols and applications. This was actually Bjorn Wagner, co-founder of Parity Technologies behind Polkadot. The BSN integration will support developers on that journey by enabling them to seamlessly connect to the public chain. Polkadot helps connect both public and permissioned chains with each other on its protocol. So when I was reading this, I'm like, why does China implement this? What is what did they get out of it? They're like, oh, okay, that's right. Polkadot doesn't really compete with anybody, it's just there for interoperability. So that's one of the reasons why I've invested in Polkadot. Anyhow, it's set to join BSN's open permission blockchain initiative to provide blockchain services in the Chinese market where decentralized public chains are heavily scrutinized by its government. And out of all that scrutiny, they still say, you know what, Polkadot, we're gonna go with that. These are the things that you have to look for in projects, like who's adopting it? What kind of community do they have? What is the team behind it? When you know these types of things, you kind of get excited for the project. And you're like, okay, well, I don't know what's going to go on in the near term, but they're setting themselves up for massive explosion moving on in the future. And it's why I invested into it. So let me just think about this project. Let's move on. And last up, this is one of the big stories. Cardano's Gogan era inching closer. And... I will just say this. I was very critical of uh, Cardano because the price never moves and, you know, I get antsy because I'm human and that's just how it goes, right? We want uh, everything to happen faster now, quicker and all that stuff. But uh, I've been critical of that. Also been critical about uh, Cardano moving so slow. I'm like, just get, get going. Just, you know, make it work. And uh, of course, I was wrong because you would see all these different protocols and different problems that are going on. I mean, look, as far as DeFi goes, I mean, that is just a dumpster fire in some of those different projects. Also, uh, real quickly, 100 million liquidated on the DeFi protocol compound following an Oracle exploit. I'm not gonna go over it because it's just like every day there's some other problem with uh, DeFi and what is going on there. But so I've been critical of Cardano and they're doing, the, they're doing it the right way, right? They're doing it the right way, doing the right things, taking it very slow because they're trying to really do some pretty good things and pretty amazing things in my opinion. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look. So Gogan, the forthcoming era of the Cardano blockchain, inching closer to full implementation in the most recent rollout update. And of course, Gogan, if you don't know, that's going to uh, be able to implement smart contracts on the Cardano blockchain. This is what it looks like. So before, I mean, we've already, we're pretty much in the middle right now. I mean, kind of. So Byron, as far as the roadmap goes, that was the foundation. That was when they were kind of laying all the track. And then Shelly is when they actually went from an ERC-20 token to the mainnet, and then it became decentralized. That's why we all have now with Cardano with uh, pools, you can stake your Cardano. And it's actually now 51% is being done by individual pools. Hey, newsflash, I'll also be starting a Cardano staking pool. Give it about two or three weeks. I don't have the technical know-how to do it. 
I am um, assembling people to help me and to get it, make it be up 100% of the time because there's been different issues with downtime and other areas. So I'll let everybody know when that's up and uh, it's gonna take a while because I want it to be as good as it possibly can be. All right, so that's Shelly. Now, Gogan is all about smart contracts and when this happens, when they get this going. Now, remember, it's not going to be like immediate. We're looking at Q1 2021. So after that happens, and they're going to look for scaling. I think they're talking about Hydra with their 10,000 transactions per second. And then Voltaire is going to be governance, but that's a ways out. So right now, they're focusing on the smart contract. I think it's a great move, and uh, I think it's what's going to help push the price up a lot more. So it states, according to Cardano's uh, Vladimir, the node teams continue to deliver on adding native tokens and token locking features. On the project matter states that they are now close to opening up the pre-production environment that will make it possible to create and distribute native tokens on Cardano. Also, they have that ERC20 converter, the tool that allows managing the tools in the Cardano chain or migrating tokens from other blockchains. If you haven't seen this, I did a video on this a while back and it's pretty cool. You can just take any ERC20 token that's on Ethereum put it through this ERC-20 converter, and now it'll be on Cardano. So it's like seamless transition. So if Ethereum for any way, shape, or form can't handle 100% of the global requirements, <laughs> who, that just sounds ridiculous now that I say that. I mean, who can really, you know, take on 100% of the global requirements for everything out there? That's why I think there's not just going to be one smart contract platform. I think it's going to be multiple. And I think Cardano is one of those winners. And that's why I also I've hedged my bet. It's uh, Ethereum, Cardano, EOS, Tezos. I've done that because I don't know which one's going to be the ultimate winner. I don't think there is ever an ultimate winner. So I like to kind of spread things around. So then moving down to finish up, the team is also finalizing the cost model of Plutus. The platforms that will power smart contracts on the Cardano blockchain. The Plutus application uh, currently focus on refreshing the Plutus Playground, a web-based environment, lets developers work on an emulated version of Cardano. So this is one of those things that uh, Cardano likes to do. They like to kind of set things up, let the developers play around with it, break things, and then they kind of push it out to the masses. The beta release scope of Marlowe, a specialized language for Cardano smart contracts, is also almost finalized. So there's a lot of things going on in the background that we don't report on too much here because it's very technical. I am not a very technical person. Some of these things actually put me to sleep but I know they are fantastic and they're great for the network. And again, some of these things are beyond me, but that's why you have a crack team that's been put together by Charles here to really address all the different issues that they can possibly think of globally and kind of work to be one of those dominating players. Anyhow, I mean, I could be wrong, but let me know what you think in the comments section. And that's it. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you don't know, uh, the Dan Teaches Crypto website is live. It's a free, 100% free, always is, always will be. Um, and just kind of goes over the simplicity uh, and the, the simplest way I can uh, describe cryptocurrency digital assets. And they're broken down into five different categories. We've got the uh, core, different course modules. There's five basics where we just go over like the basics, why cryptocurrency, why digital assets how to do everything that you would you know, probably need to know as far as crypto goes. Safety, how to avoid all the different scams because it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. Module three is all about investing, why I dollar cost average, also value averaged. And then the different things you need to do as far as like to do your own research for reviews. And the last one is how do I, like how do I buy Theta? How do I use Uniswap? How do I you know, update my Nano Ledger and all those things? So those are all in module five. To sign up, just go to danteachescrypto.com. There's a link in every one of my videos. Sign up for free. Very simple thing. Very simple to do. Very easy. All right. So that's it. So thanks for watching all the way through. Appreciate it again. And if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic on that one. And uh, that is it. So thanks for watching again. Appreciate it. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.